Summary of Be Water, My Friend The True Teachings of Bruce Lee by Shannon Lee Written and narrated by Janky Mind Introduction Be Water, My Friend serves as both a source of inspiration and a personal reflection, delving into Bruce Lee's profound Be Water philosophy. Rooted in his profound connection with the element and his lifelong dedication to martial arts, the book imparts simple yet deeply meaningful lessons on self-actualization. Bruce Lee, a name known far beyond martial arts and film circles, was a rare master in both disciplines. Revered for bridging the cultural gap between East and West in the 20th century, he went beyond physical prowess and Hollywood glamour, embodying a profound thinker who prioritized personal growth and enlightened living. His iconic maxim, Be Water, encapsulates a philosophical system that Lee believed was the key to his external achievements and meaningful existence. While Lee's philosophical system was rigorous, he approached teaching with humility, aiming to be a guiding force rather than imposing beliefs. The ultimate objective, according to Lee, was universal. Self-actualization, the realization of our best selves. This audiobook explores five fundamental tenets of Lee's philosophy. The wisdom of water, the significance of emptiness, the lessons from opponents and obstacles, the truth of kinship, and the principles of Jeet Kune Do. The teachings may appear contradictory at times, deliberately so. Life is a dynamic ecosystem, and enlightened living demands a versatile toolkit of responses, adapted to different contexts. Embrace the challenge of being open to contrasting ideas, recognizing that the approach needed tomorrow might contrast with today's. Acknowledging that the journey to self-actualization is lengthy, Lee emphasized that it begins with a single step. While he may no longer guide us, his enduring teachings remain. So, pack lightly and embark on this journey toward your fullest potential, starting now. Chapter 1. The Profundity of Water Contemplating his profound connection with martial arts, Bruce Lee once expressed that his knowledge and wisdom were derived entirely from these disciplines. To him, martial arts transcended mere physicality. They served as a microcosm that mirrored the intricacies of life. However, this holistic understanding did not come effortlessly. Commencing his journey at the age of 13 under the tutelage of the esteemed Saifu Yip Man, Li delved into the world of Wing Chun. Yip Man, a skilled teacher, intertwined Taoist philosophy, the principles of yin and yang, and elements from the natural world into his training. Yet, for the fiery and headstrong young Li, these philosophical aspects were not initially as captivating as the physical techniques. His focus leaned more towards asserting dominance over nature rather than harmonizing with it. The pivotal shift towards embracing the philosophy of be water occurred when Lee, frustrated and resentful after being sent home to reflect on his Saifu's teachings, rowed a small boat into Hong Kong Harbor. There, in an iconic moment, he punched at the South China Sea, and the water itself became his teacher. The lesson conveyed was one his human Saifu had been imparting all along. Strength lies in flexibility, and power is found in adaptability. While not everyone may be a martial artist, it's crucial to note that Lee's philosophy primarily revolves around self-actualization and enlightened living, universal aspirations. So how can we apply the principles of water to these pursuits? Consider, first, water's unparalleled ability to adeptly respond to its environment. Water flows, crashes, circumvents obstacles, and at times, overcomes them. Similarly, in the flux of life, Wisdom lies in knowing when to yield and when to assert, a principle we can adopt from water. Moreover, water embodies the concept of being whole by incorporating yin and yang. Unlike the common perception of yin and yang as opposites, they are more accurately described as complementary. Just like water, we possess both strengths and weaknesses, and life itself encompasses joy and sorrow. Water serves as a reminder that acknowledging and embracing these dualities is the healthiest way to navigate through life, making us and life itself complete and indivisible. Chapter 2. The Profound Essence of Emptiness Empty your mind, Bruce Lee continually advised himself, 
recognizing, as many wisdom traditions assert, that the true value of a vessel lies in its emptiness, whether it be a cup, pot, or bottle. For Lee, the concept of emptiness within the framework of enlightened living had a dual nature, operating from neutrality and embodying the spirit of an eternal student. Operating from neutrality, according to Lee, meant standing between the poles of positivity and negativity. Instead of hastily labeling an experience as inherently good or bad, he aimed to embrace the essence of what is. Given the pervasive nature of our conditioned preferences and tendency to draw conclusions, achieving this neutrality can be challenging. Yet, Lee's personal mantra, empty your mind, serves as a powerful cue to initiate this process. When something positive unfolds, Lee suggested allowing the natural emotions and feelings to surface. Once they have run their course, return to the state of an empty mind. This approach allows one to fully experience the present moment, whether it's the joy of an unexpected promotion or the irritation of an unforeseen flat tire, without clinging to those emotions longer than necessary. The second facet of Lee's philosophy of emptiness involved being an eternal student, advocating for continuous self-examination. To Lee, the reflection in the mirror was as valid a classroom as any other. In his daily life, this commitment manifested through practices such as meditation, reading, journaling, and deep introspection. While conversing with trusted friends or seeking formal therapy are alternative avenues, what matters most is the consistent dedication to self-reflection. Each day, each moment presents an opportunity to return to a state of neutrality or to learn something new. This perpetual potential for growth is a gift, preventing life from becoming monotonous, stagnant, or devoid of inspiration. Embracing these ever-present possibilities enriches our lives with depth and meaning. Chapter 3. Embracing Adversity, Opponents, and Obstacles In the journey of life, encountering opponents and obstacles is an inevitability for all living, breathing beings. These challenges are often perceived as adversarial, with few willingly choosing to face them if given the option. Bruce Lee, however, viewed difficult people and challenging circumstances with a nuanced perspective, reflecting his appreciation for the interplay of yin and yang. Instead of perceiving them as adversaries to combat, he saw them as opportunities for co-creation. Although this approach may be theoretically appealing, implementing it in practice is a different challenge. Fortunately, Bruce Lee serves as a guiding light on this path as well. The first step involves understanding your opponent or obstacle. While moving towards what seems undesirable may feel counterintuitive, recognizing that conflict is essentially a heightened form of relationship is crucial. Ask yourself why you perceive this person or circumstance as adversarial. Identify any recurring patterns from your past and reflect on your own contributions to the current situation. Next, exercise your empty mind muscles and contemplate the underlying lessons. Bruce Lee, in moments of physical or spiritual setbacks, would take time for introspection. Similarly, ask yourself why you faced a setback. Is there a new skill to acquire or an old wound that needs healing? Investigate the lessons embedded in your experiences. Before taking any action, secure your mindset. Challenge yourself to move beyond fear or pessimism, recognizing that neither contributes to overcoming the challenges you face. As Bruce Lee noted, defeat is a state of mind. Refrain from limiting your growth and success by deeming challenges insurmountable before even beginning. Affirmations, a technique regularly employed by Lee, can ensure that your mindset supports rather than hinders you. Additionally, Journaling or engaging in meaningful conversations serve as effective tools. A profound realization emerges from this exploration. Often, we are our greatest opponent and obstacle. Yet, this realization is empowering. Unlike external challenges, we can become masters of ourselves through conscious choice. Bruce Lee exemplified this mastery, demonstrating that we have the capacity to navigate and overcome our internal challenges. Chapter 4. The Essence of Kinship In a profound interview with Canadian journalist Pierre Burton, 
Bruce Lee was asked whether he identified as Chinese or American. His response, timeless in its relevance, resonates powerfully. He identified as human. As he elaborated in that now famous clip, under the sky, under the heavens, there is but one family. Those close to Bruce Lee remember him not only for his expansive mind and physical prowess, but also for his kindness and generosity. Even those who weren't part of his inner circle fondly recall his frequent use of the expression, my friend, a warm refrain that permeated Lee's conversations and writings. Perhaps Lee's perspective on humanity as belonging to one global family stemmed from his own experience of not neatly fitting into any particular category. Deemed too American to be Chinese and too Chinese to be American, Lee was a perpetual outsider. However, rather than allowing prejudice to hinder him, he embraced a profound understanding of yin and yang. He allowed others' fear to teach him love, their judgment to teach him acceptance, and their shadow to teach him light. This wasn't a justification for the racism he faced, but a demonstration of Lee taking the high road, recognizing that hate could not be conquered by hate. In moments when he needed to take a stand, he did so with compassion for his fellow human beings. Regardless of whether we face similar prejudices in our lives, Lee's legacy encourages us to remember that how we treat anyone reflects how we treat everyone. Excluding even one person from our hearts opens the potential to exclude all, including ourselves. We may not become everyone's best friend, but we can choose to be fellow humans. We can carry forward Lee's legacy by embodying acceptance and light, even if it takes time to reach the level of unconditional love he exemplified. Yet, as we contemplate these ideals, let's not be too hasty in dismissing our own capacity for such profound connection. Each of us can likely recall instances when we experience the bliss of recognizing our shared humanity. This bliss is profound because it's true. Kinship lies at the heart of all personal growth and enlightened living. Chapter 5 The Path of Jeet Kune Do Crafting Your Authentic Life Here's a lesser-known fact. Bruce Lee was a controversial figure in the martial arts scene. According to the traditions of his time, being only three-quarters Chinese, Lee supposedly shouldn't have been allowed to learn Chinese Kung Fu. It was through the wisdom of his Saifu, Yip Man, who privately trained Lee to avoid public backlash, that he gained the opportunity. As he progressed in his martial arts journey, Lee faced criticism for studying under teachers from various disciplines. His rejection of the notion of a distinct Chinese way of fighting, or Japanese way of fighting, went against tradition and wasn't widely accepted. Lee further stirred the pot by establishing his own martial arts school, Jeet Kune Do. The audacity of this move, combined with his incorporation of elements from boxing, fencing, and biomechanics, met resistance. Nevertheless, he pressed forward. Driven by his pursuit of self-actualization rather than the approval of the masses, Jeet Kune Do, loosely translated as the way of the intercepting fist, represented, in Lee's perspective, a synthesis of the best aspects of his learning journey, discarding what proved unhelpful and infused with his unique essence. This aspect is noteworthy because Lee's approach to shaping Jeet Kune do mirrored how he crafted his own life and how he encouraged others to do the same. In practical terms, this involves closely observing our lives and employing tools like meditation, journaling, and conversation to discern our personal Jeet Kune Do. What aspects do we wish to retain? What do we want to discard? And how can we manifest a life that is entirely our own expression? For those who prefer a visual metaphor, Lee likened the pursuit of personal growth and enlightened living to that of a sculptor. Our life is the block of marble, and we, as the sculptors, determine what remains, what is chiseled away, and the unique flair and style in which we sculpt. The objective is to arrive at an authentic and sincere form. Returning to our starting point, it's essential to emphasize that Lee did not create Jeet Kune Do or share his philosophy to mold the legion of new Bruce Lees. Instead, he presented his body, mind, and spirit as a metaphorical finger pointing at the moon. Recognizing that each person must perceive the moon for themselves, 
Your path may not be the way of the intercepting fist or the way of water. Labels were inconsequential to Lee. What mattered was the authentic expression. What is the fullest expression of you? Summary While Bruce Lee's public image is often associated with his extraordinary physical prowess and a string of blockbuster movies, his true dedication lay in the pursuit of self-actualization. By internalizing fundamental principles from Lee's philosophy, including the insights into water's wisdom, the significance of emptiness, the lessons embedded in opponents and obstacles, the truth of kinship, and the path of Jeet Kune Do, you have the opportunity to experience substantial personal growth and embrace the enlightened living that this cultural icon bequeathed as his enduring legacy. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.